Here, we're going to talk about red blood cell death. So red blood cells live about three months, 120 days. What happens to them when they're at the end of that time? Um, they are going to be processed by a couple of organs that I'm going to introduce to you here. First, let's label these guys. These are going to be red blood cells traveling in our blood vessel. So our blood vessels. And the other organs we're gonna need to include here are the spleen, I'll put up here. This is not gonna be anatomically like correct, <laughs> but it's gonna be the order in which these, the red blood cells are processed. So here's our spleen, our liver I'm gonna put over here, big old liver. And I'm also going to draw the kidney. A lot of maroon colored organs here. And one more is the intestine. It's gonna help us get stuff out. So here's, that's brown, is the intestine. Okay. So red blood cells, erythrocytes, are going to be taken up into the spleen where they're going to be broken down. And this is the most common mechanism that is happening when red blood cell breakdown is at a healthy, normal level. So what I mean by that is red blood cells can break down in the blood vessel itself. I'll come back to that. Typically, most red blood cells are broken down in the spleen into little bits. And what, what bits might we have here? Well, we've got hemoglobin, right? That is a, the majority of red blood cells are hemoglobin, that protein. The protein is made up of alpha and beta globulins. So the quaternary structure is hemoglobin. This has tertiary structure to it, and these are going to be recycled. So our body can use these proteins again to make new red blood cells. Hemoglobin also is composed of heme, right? Remember that heme that has um, iron as a core. So iron is going to be one component here. And the other component in the spleen, this is going to happen. Heme is going to become bilirubin. This bilirubin at this point coming out of the spleen is called unconjugated bilirubin. I'm gonna choose a color here, let's do blue. So bilirubin, here it is. That's not a scale, it's not that big compared to um, the red blood cells. It's a pigment though. It's going to be, go in the bloodstream. At this point, it is going to be called unconjugated bilirubin. Another name for this is going to be indirect. This will be important when we get to um, test results. They're not quite synonymous, but close enough. So this unconjugated bilirubin is gonna travel through the bloodstream. It's actually gonna be bound to serum albumin to be transported. The conjugation doesn't refer to that. Um, it's going to travel to the liver. Here, bilirubin is going to go from its unconjugated form to its conjugated form. So this here is conjugated. I'm not even spelling conjugated right. Conjugated bilirubin. This is also called direct. This is gonna be released out of the, year of the liver. 
oh, it's going to pop up here. I think I have it. This conjugation, what this refers to is um, a chemical um, metabolic pathway. Of course, I've covered this here where the conjugation just refers to these little groups being added to the bilirubin itself. So that conjugation refers to a molecular level addition of, um, it's actually diglucuronidide. I'm actually gonna make that go away because that's kind of a side note just to kind of help, if, if that helps you remember which that's happening in the liver, that conjugation. So now we're left with conjugated bilirubin. And this is what's, what's different about it. This is actually the important thing about it is that it is water soluble. So this was necessary for bilirubin to be excreted out of the body. That's gonna happen via the kidney to some extent, mostly the intestine. So bilirubin is in your feces. There is some bilirubin in your urine. as well. Okay. So liver's job is to make bilirubin, convert it into a form that can be excreted by the body. The spleen's job was to convert hemoglobin ultimately into bilirubin so that that can be excreted by the body. If there are blood cells that lice um, and break down outside of the spleen, which would be in the blood vessels. Let me add another one here. This is called intravascular, because we're inside the blood vessel, hemolysis. What's happening here? This is called extravascular hemolysis. We're outside of the blood vessels, the spleen is doing it. Intravascular hemolysis. Um, it, so we're breaking this into little bits. And then those little bits is this stuff, right? And our body can only handle so much of that. Um, hemo, hem can actually be hemoglobin, sorry, can actually be um, not, it can be toxic for the body in high quantities. So we excrete it. Fine. Um, and one way that it's excreted is through binding to another protein, of course, that helps to kind of neutralize it so that it's not so, um, not doing so much stuff. So this green one is called haptoglobin. It's going to bind to hemoglobin in the blood when hemoglobin is present in the blood. So this is going to happen with, um, intravascular hemolysis. It's going to cause hemoglobin to be present in the blood. Haptoglobin jumps in, binds to it. So this happy little thing can then be excreted um, without hemoglobin damaging the system. So we can go out of the body as waste. So haptoglobin, hemoglobin complex is excreted. All right, again, that's happening normally under at a lower proportion than what the spleen is doing, which is the kind of safer for the body way of breaking hemoglobin down fully into alpha and beta globulins, as well as unconjugated bilirubin, which then has to be converted to a water soluble form via conjugation in the liver before it can be excreted. Pretty cool stuff.